Yeah, yeah. Today is Taco Sunday. Methodist man will sell tacos in the in the lobby of the church after the worship service today. Cost of the tacos is by donation. So after church, stop by our table, enjoy tacos, and fellowship with each other before heading to Sunday school or home. And if you're going home, take you some tacos for a late afternoon snack. Your support of the taco sales lets us support ministries that we need to support each year. Thank you.
And welcome to the gathering service. I am so delighted for all of you that are here today. Uh, I'm Pastor Terry, and uh, I'm going to be opening the service. And as usual, our amazing, amazing uh, praise team is going to lead you through most of the service. And then Eileen will be delivering the message for you this morning. Um, but I have a couple of announcements that I do want to make. We are having a um, church-wide uh, meeting uh, after this service, and it's just going to be some question and answers about the upcoming general conference, and the pastor would certainly like for us to be there if at all possible. And second thing is, is a great big welcome to Amanda and her son Noah and the daughter Maria Lina, who is not here today, but we are welcoming them as brothers and sisters here. They have joined uh, the church here and transferred their letter. So this is now their home church. So, hey, give them a big hand welcoming hey. them. <laughs> woo, woo. Yeah. Abby? Abby. <laughs> what, what did I say? Amanda. Oh, oh Abby. Abby. <laughs> I do know her. Honestly, I do. But, you know, when you're my age, hey, all right? But the world is good, God is good, and we are going to worship him with music and message. We're going to start with Good God Almighty. And you guys know this one, so we expect you guys to echo back with us. <laughs> I can't count the times I've called your name some broken night And you showed up and patched me up like you do every time I get amnesia, I forget that you keep coming around And you know where you'll never let me down Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me Praise your name no matter what comes So I can't praise your name no matter what comes. Tell me, is he good? He is good. Tell me, is he God? He is God. He is good God Almighty. He said your love goes on forever. Mercy never stops. So why would I assume you'd be somebody that you're not? Like sun in the morning. I know you're going to be there every day. So what on earth would make me be afraid? Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praise your name no matter what comes. Because I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I can praise your name at the top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? He is good. Tell me, is he God? He is God. He is good God Almighty. Praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime, praise him when the sun goes down. Love him in the morning, love him in the noontime, love him when the sun goes down. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praise your name, no matter. Cause I know where I'd be without your mercy So I can praise your name at the top of my lungs Tell me, is he good? He is good Tell me, is he God? He is God He is good God Almighty Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime Jesus when the sun goes down Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus in the sun goes down. Amen, uh, amen. Jeff. So they can't hear the guitar. Broadcast.
Trying to make them all think I'm strong Yeah, the face I keep putting on Says I ain't tired But these tears ain't eyes ain't lying Cause hard Nobody told me life could be so hard Weary soul with a worn out heart That's barely beating Every time I get that feeling my hands held high saying dear lord jesus you know that i can't do this on my own i can't do this on my own lord knows i've tried but i'm good at falling down thank god you're good at picking me up off the ground the world's gonna try to break me i know the one who makes me strong Like my daddy always told me so There's a place you can always go When you got nothing And then he handed me the one thing That's strong Doesn't matter how old it gets There's power in the words in this little red Bible And when I'm desperate for revival Saying, dear Lord Jesus, you know that I can't do this on my own. Can't do this on my own. Lord knows I've tried, but I'm good at falling down. Thank God you're good at picking me up off the ground. The world's gonna try to break me. I know the one who makes me so.
So this next song, you say, we weren't even supposed to do it this week. Um, so it was a really busy week for, for me. Uh, the triplets got sick. The twins have double ear infections. Eli has a virus. And um, and then Mari got sick. So there's a lot of that going on. And that's a lot of sick kids. And then Ronan got sick, my husband. And so it's just chaos. And uh, yesterday I was driving uh, to a work thing. And it was really early in the morning. And the sun's coming up. It's just beautiful. And I put some praise music on. And then this song came on. And uh, a little voice in my said, a little voice in my head said, you need to sing this tomorrow. And I sometimes, I don't know about you, but I struggle sometimes with, is that really God talking to me? Really? And so I fought it off and fought it off and it kept on my heart. And um, I went for a run yesterday and it was still on my heart. And I was like, now God, we, uh, poor Lawrence is filling in for Joe. This is Lawrence, by the way, everybody. He's played with us several times. And um, I was like, you can't do that to him. I can't do that to the band. That'd be horrible. And so I just put it in the back of my mind. And then this morning I felt it again. God was like, you need to sing the song. I was like, God, this is not going to be super easy. This is going to be really bad. And then um, I sing at a church before I come over, and the pastor preached on listening to God speak to you. <laughs> if God doesn't just slap you across the face sometimes, you know? And so um, tomorrow will be a year since my dad passed away. And uh, I think God just wanted to put it on my heart that he's got you no matter what, you know? Even in those really, really dark times and hard times that you think he's not there and you don't quite understand why, he's got you. And so I don't know if this is for me or if this is for you or you at home, but God is wanting this played. And so I just ask you to open your heart and listen. Fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every again just who I am because I need to know you say I am love when I can't feel a thing you say I am strong when I think I am weak you say I am hell when I
Thank you guys. Well, good morning. How y'all doing? Well, today I want to talk to you about peace. Something that we're kind of short of, don't you think? So to start out with, can you all show me the peace symbol? Right? Yeah. We all know this, hey? All right? If you don't know, the sermon's titled Peace Out, okay? Does anybody know where this came from? The hippies. The hippies. But you know, somebody had it before the hippies? Yeah. It started in January of 1941, and it was the victory sign. And then it kind of just morphed itself over to the hippies in the 60s and the 70s, right? And so I got this. Now, I know that probably you've all seen, I wanted a shirt that had this on it, but I didn't have it. So this, right? Has everybody seen this? What's this? It's another peace sign, right? Now, do you know where this came from? The hippies. the hippies, right? We just give the hippies all the peace, right? But actually, where this came from, it was designed by a graphic artist named Gerald Horton, who is from, uh, the, uh, from Great Britain, and he was tasked to design a logo for nuclear disarmament. And it, I don't know how well you can see this, but it, it takes the N and the D from the semaphore signs. You know, the ones that they do with the flags on ships. Um, I don't, does anybody even do that? I don't even know if anybody knows how to do that anymore. Anyway, so you've got the straight up and down, and then you've got the two arms down, um, and that's the N and the D, and that makes up the peace sign for nuclear disarmament. Of course, again, 60s, right? <laughs> All right, well, there is a much older symbol of peace, this one. Have you seen this one? It's a dove. And what's the dove holding? Olive branch, right? Where does that come from? Noah's Ark, Ark, right? At the end, when when Noah's not sure, can we go out? Sends the dove out. Dove comes back with the olive branch. Now, actually, the olive branch was a symbol of peace for a very long time. Uh, The Romans and uh, the Greeks when instead of waving the white flag, they would wave the olive branch to say, hey, we give up, we surrender, no more, right? But it has come about, and I mean, even Picasso did one of these. Uh, 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 I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's one of the few things I can actually recognize as something. But, uh, but so the, the dove. Now there's another, there's a bunch of, you know, as I was looking at peace signs, signs of peace, I came up with another one that I wasn't really familiar with as a sign of peace. And oh my God, this was my crisis this morning. You know, when you say, God, I'm not enough, this is it right here. <laughs> Does anybody have any idea what this really sad looking thing is? It's a crane. Somebody who said that. Yeah, oh, praise God. Somebody got it. It, it's, it. I am horrible at origami. I, you know, I'm watching this YouTube video. Of course, I don't have origami paper, which would have helped a little bit. I don't think it would have helped a lot. But, uh, and I folded it, I don't know how many times. And this was, this was my, my kindergarten version. <laughs> that was the best I could do. But the paper crane is also a sign of peace. And especially in Japan, uh, they, they use it a lot. No surprise, because it's origami. Um, but in the Japanese culture, the crane is thought to live for a thousand years. It, that's the lore. And uh, it was held in high esteem. And the story behind the paper origami crane becoming a symbol of peace comes from this really cool little story. Um, There was a girl whose name was Sadako Sakasi, and she just loved these cranes. And she was from Hiroshima. And she uh, survived the bombing. She was probably about two, I think, when it happened. And then she got leukemia as a result of the radiation from the bombing. And so she thought if she could make, since they live a thousand years, if she could make a thousand paper cranes, that she would be cured. Well, somebody heard this story and made a little children's tale. 
And in the story, she doesn't finish making all the cranes. But in reality, she did. Actually, she made about 1,400 of these paper cranes. She had a lot of time on her hands, you know, in the hospital for about eight months, and so she made lots of paper cranes. And uh, so anyway, at the um, Peace Memorial in Hiroshima, they erected a statue, if you ever get a chance to go there, of her holding in her hands a little origami crane as a sign of peace. And now there are several of those statues around the world at different places. And I haven't seen this, but I guess if you go to the 9-11 memorial, they have one of the original paper cranes because now what they do is this foundation that kind of is behind all of this takes these cranes that she made and sends them places where they're needed as a symbol of peace. So pathetic as it is, hers were much better, I'm sure. But that is a sign. So we've got lots and signs and symbols of peace. Peace is kind of a big deal, isn't it? I mean, we all want it. Um, I, I, I think if you asked anybody, would you like to have peace? You know, I mean, we all know about, you know, the, the Miss America. To, you know, what, what, what would you like to do in the world? I would like world peace, right? We all want peace. But it's kind of a hard commodity to come by. Um, so let me, let me read today uh, scripture to you. It's from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. And of course, we're in this period of time after Jesus' resurrection. And so Jesus has begun to appear. And he appears to his disciples in, in this chapter. And, and so we're going to read verses 19 to 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were gathered together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands inside, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And then... With that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. And if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So that, the very first thing, out of the bucket, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. Not once, but twice. Remember, anytime stuff's repeated, it's usually important. And of course, they were not feeling very peaceful, were they? They were scared to death they were going to be next on the cross because they were followers of Jesus. And so they could use a little peace. And so it's not surprising that that was something as a greeting that Jesus shared with them. Now, the Bible talks about three primary kinds of peace. Now, you can find others. These are not the only ones. But the three most major kinds that you see are psychological peace, which is the comfort within. And that may have been what Jesus was trying to help him out with a little bit when he said, peace be with you. But then there's also relationship, relational peace, the harmony among humanity. So it's our relationship with other people close to us, relationship with different countries. That's the relational peace. And then the third kind is the spiritual peace. And that's the peace between man and God. So we've got it in us, between us, and with God. So... How did these all get messed up then? Well, it's sin, isn't it? Sin totally messes up our peace. Um, you know, just like some of the songs that we heard this morning. It's, it's all of those little lies that we are told, that we tend to believe, that causes us not to have peace. So what does this peace that Jesus offered disciples mean? Probably, like I said, they were in turmoil. They were afraid. And that's probably the one thing they needed the most at that period in time. And, you know, it's what we need too. In Jeremiah 6.14, I'm sure you've heard this verse. It says, they have treated my people's brokenness superficially, claiming peace, peace, when there is no peace. It's kind of like saying, they're there. It'll be okay, right? That's what people do. But does that give you peace? No. I mean, I, 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 okay, confession. I love Big Bang Theory, right? Sheldon cannot 
relate, if you've never watched it, he, he just it does not have any situational awareness or empathy with other people. And so whenever somebody's hurting and he kind of finally figures it out, he'll just say, they're there. Like that's going to help, right? But don't we kind of do that a lot? You know, we say they're there and, and hope that that covers it up and it helps people out. And, but we say, you know, peace, peace, and there is no peace. You know, it's still there. Because the world offers superficial peace, you know? It doesn't offer lasting, permanent, wonderful, life-giving peace. We try. We, maybe we take a vacation hoping we'll find some peace from work, right? Maybe there's a ceasefire and we, we have a peace, you know, in the violence of war. Or maybe we just have a time out or a cooling off, right? And it may help, but it doesn't ever last. Always the turmoil, always the upset, always the anguish comes back. So what's the answer? I mean, there's got to be an answer for this. Otherwise, why would Jesus, first thing out of the bucket after being crucified, dead, buried, and resurrected, resurrected, would he say to his disciples, peace be with you? There's got to be something there. Not once, but twice. So what's the answer? Well, let's look at what happened in today's scripture. Jesus reveals himself to his disciples, shows them the wounds in his hands, shows them his side. And what did they do? They believe, right? They believe because they see it. I mean, how could you not believe? Okay, here he is right in front of me. Now, for us, it's a little harder, but it's supposed to be better because we haven't seen and we still believe, right? Blessed are you who have not seen and yet still believe, right? So that's kind of the position we find ourselves in, but we certainly have plenty of evidence to show that we can have something to believe in. So the first thing was to believe, right? And it must have been amazing to see the resurrected Jesus. I can't even fathom it. Here they'd seen him die the most horrific death, put him in a tomb, and yet here he is standing right in front of him. All okay, still showing the wounds, so it's really him. I mean, he did the stuff to help prove that this is a real deal. So then, the next thing he does is he breathes the Holy Spirit onto them. <sighs> How wonderful, right? But that wasn't the end of it, right? He sends them into the world to serve. So the next thing he does, they believe, gives them the Holy Spirit, sends them to serve, sends them out into the world. And then the last thing he tells them to do, talks about is forgiveness, isn't it? How much peace do you have when you're holding a grudge? Or you're upset or angry about somebody or something or some past wrong or some horribleness in your life, which we all have. I mean, there's no guarantee that everything's going to be roses. There's no peace when that happens. I mean, that's about all that you can think about. It takes over your whole, whole life. So the third step was forgiveness. This is our roadmap to peace, right? The first thing is to believe. The second thing is to serve. Because let's face it, when you're serving other people, it's really hard to be upset. And the third is to forgive. That's our roadmap. He lays it all out just like Jesus does so succinctly, so easily, so wonderfully in his first meeting back with the disciples. So now where do you fail? Where do you fall? What areas of your life are you lacking peace? How's your faith life? The belief part. Who are you serving? Who do you need to forgive? Might be yourself even. You know? Because remember, one of the types of peace is the inner one, the psychological. The world may not change. May I pretty, okay, the world won't change. Right? There's going to be wars. There's going to be injustice. There's going to be poverty. There's going to be hardships. There's going to be fighting. There's going to be strife. The world's not changing. However, 
we can change. If we believe, serve, and forgive. So what's the roadmap roadmap to peace? Number one, believe. believe. Say it. Believe. Believe. Number two, serve. serve. Number three, forgive. Forgive. Okay, you guys need a little practice. (laughs) Okay? If you're at home, say it with us. Number one, Believe. believe. Number two, serve. And number three, forgive. If you put those three things into practice, you may not have perfect peace because, let's face it, we're in the world, but you're going to have a lot more than you may, might be having right now. And when you feel like you don't have peace, that's where you look. You follow the map. You know, you put on ways, right? When you're lost and things aren't going right. So follow the roadmap. Believe serve and forgive and that's the answer to having at least some peace peace out we're going to finish the service with nobody 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 <laughs> Ready? for joining us today. Remember to have peace. Believe, serve, and forgive. We love you so very much. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. We'll see you next week. Ciao.